before you question like why would Brandon work with someone who went to <laughs> prison and <laughs> his wife gave him all these warnings that he had these red flags. <laughs> People make bad decisions. We all have made some bad decisions, some significantly worse than others. I just know that it doesn't serve me to be a cynic and I believe that some people can change, right? Some people can have a serve jail time and come out and actually be, you know, uh, a testimony for the correctional uh, system. And many are not. But again, I don't know that. If you are telling me that you are a good person and you're changed and this, that, and the other, like, you know, I do he my best to, to have my that. BS meter up, yeah. but I want to believe that most people have good intentions or if they've had a bad rap sheet, they are making a change, especially when working with me because people that know me and spend any time around me know that like, that's what I stand for. I stand for a certain code of ethics and I stand for, you know, the truth and just doing the right thing. And, and, and I think people want like deep down, people want that. They want to be a part of that. Hey look, life is not easy. Anything good worth having isn't easy, but add to that the complexity of being an entrepreneur, being married, having children. We have done a lot of things right. We've made a few million dollars. We probably lost a few million dollars. We made some mistakes along the way, but one thing that we are really good at is relationships. That's right. We have been together for almost two decades. And we've been through hell and back together. Yeah, we have. And we used to think that we were the only ones like us out there. But especially in our entrepreneurial ventures, we started meeting other ride or die couples that were going through the exact same things that we were going through. And they kept coming to us talking about advice and looking for solutions and really ways to help their relationship thrive. So we just knew there had to be a tribe of us out there. There's no way we could be the only ones out there. We are getting real and raw, guys. That's what he said. Oh my God, babe. From dating to marriage to kids and even sex. Even how to fight the right way. We're gonna be committed to being open and honest with you because we believe in your relationship too. Welcome to the Ride or Die Podcast. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the podcast. I'm Sam. I'm Brandon. And we are back to talk about this lawsuit. So let's get into this because we have a really important topic we want to talk to you about regarding the whole lawsuit today. But I want to start with like, just like a really 30,000 foot view of what happened. Because there's all these lessons along the way that we learned and, and they all relate back to like putting the whole story together and getting more into detail. But um, just for like time's sake today and the importance of the first topic we want to talk about, we didn't want to just like leave you hanging where you didn't know it, what went on. So we're just going to do like a quick, quick overview. Do you want me to do it? I do. Okay. So here's the quick and dirty. We'll try to keep this to five minutes. We'll see how I do. <laughs> um, so back at the end of the summer, Brandon, um, is that okay to just start with the, with the in intent to sue? I call it the threat letter. Um, or the, demand, bully, the bully letter. Oh, yeah. Demand letter. Yeah, yeah. The De demand letter um, of uh, somebody we had been working with in real estate for a while. And um, we left on our terms when we left. So, and the guy didn't like it very much. So, when we left, we were probably owed about 50 grand. But this guy's pretty dirty in business, in our opinion. So, I told Brandon, let's not chase old money. Let's just move on, which is how we've always been in our business, period. Let's just move on to the next thing. You don't look back, you look forward and you keep going. So now let's fast forward because that was like March-ish of this, this year. Now fast forward, it's the end of the summer. It's been months. We haven't really heard from this guy very much. And he comes through with this demand letter that we owe him like close to $100,000, which is absurd. So um, Brandon was like, let me text the guy. And I was like, no, I think if he's sending us like things from a lawyer and stuff, we should probably contact our lawyer. So he's like, okay. So she said, you know, we could wait it out or we could respond. And we're like, oh, we'll wait it out and see what he does. So, you know, let's see, is he trying to strong arm us or what? So we waited. 
Um, and he still was trying to strong arm us. He did start a lawsuit, um, which we didn't know how easy it was to start one until he did. Like you could yeah. say anybody this, did anything in this country. In this country, you can get sued for anything, even though I, my company entered into a contract with his company. He sued me personally. Like, well, he, I never no, signed. He, any... he started a lawsuit against right, you personally, right. but it so, got dropped. So anybody can do that. So if you're in business, especially if you have any level of success, always make sure that one of the people in your corner is a really good attorney because yeah. they are worth their weight in gold. Yeah, and she was fantastic. Um, so anyway, let's let's. Keep... It's not a matter of if you get sued. It's when if you're doing anything significant, you will. Get yeah, sued. for sure. And we actually we were thinking this whole time like. All these years we've been in business, we're like, yeah, see, like people know that we're good people because they just don't cross that boundary. And then here we are with this fool. So anyway, um, so we don't respond. And I think this is probably a couple weeks later. We're like, I'm getting knocks on the door, but I'll be honest with you. I don't answer the door. People, there's solicitors that come by all the time. And But I was looking out the window and I kept seeing the same car coming by. And I was like, Brandon, I think some, somebody might be trying to serve you. Um, because this like one car keeps driving by. So I looked on line and I saw for sure, here we go. The lawsuit's been started. And I actually called Brandon and was like, is there something you're not telling me? And he's like, no, why? And I was like, because there's like, oh, this is what triggered it. Not only was there a knock on the door, but we got like a, a little mailer from a lawyer saying like, you're being sued. If you need, you know, representation, call me. If, if you already have representation, disregard this. And so I was like, is there something you're not telling me? And he's like, no, why? And I was like, okay, I need to go check it out. So I checked it out online. We saw what was going on. We called our, our lawyer and said, yep, this is going down. So she was, uh, she contacted and got the ball rolling. Um, so anyway, fast forward a little bit. We sat down. We found out that we had options um, and a really strong case to counter Sue back for close to six figures to what he actually owed us. And um, with much, not necessarily debate, I feel like we were pretty, we were a little riled up because it was annoying to have to go through this process. But I think overall, we did a pretty good job with our communication, which is what we want to talk about today. But at the end of the day, we ended up um, settling. There's details in there that we're going to share, but it just is going to take too much time right now. So we ended up settling. We paid him $5,000 to make the problem go away and it's all done. He signed a piece of paper saying he, first off, Brandon wasn't being sued any, anyway because had, he had gotten dropped off the lawsuit personally because he had no grounds to sue Brandon personally, but the business um, also got dropped. So now we could finally talk to you guys about it because he's gone. This is it, it's done. So um, what we wanted to share with you guys today, was that okay? Was yeah. that a good quick scenario? And I mean, I'm telling you, we both want to share the details um, really badly because there are some major lessons along the way that were just like mind blowing to us. How like this could just completely destroy a marriage um, and just even an individual like the stress that you took on about certain things and me about certain things and then collectively as a couple. But overall, it was like we did this together as a team. And that's the first thing we wanted to share. Yep, that's the topic this week, making big decisions with your spouse. But we talked about this topic before in terms of more like lighthearted or like you make goal, a career change or yeah, goal related things. Right. But life is going to throw you curveballs, right? Like this. There will be negative things that come in and try to test your marriage and you know, a financial issue like this right because it's suing for six figures um it's a character issue now someone is is questioning my character um these are these are things that could affect self-confidence it could affect uh how one spouse perceives the other it could affect you know you can get into the whole finger pointing thing like i told you i saw red flags so we never should have done business with this person and it could be a uh, me versus you, right? But so we s always stay on the same team, especially when we have a common enemy, right? Which is what this was. Someone decided they want to do attack, so we both link up and we're, you know, ready to to face what's uh, in front of us and yeah, be and redeemed at the end. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I was about to interrupt. I didn't know you still had more. 
Go ahead. So <laughs> I'd say where this, where did this, this first started with the demand letter, I immediately forwarded it to you. So you yeah. kind of knew like how hilarious this whole situation was like, look, oh my God, he is about to waste time and money to try to prove himself right. Or to try to really, it was to try to like prove a point, right? Like, like bully us, like he knew that he he needed to, to do that. Um, so I wanted to include her on like every email as things were, you know, falling apart. And then when we finally retained the attorney, obviously I kept you in the loop the whole time. We made decisions on, you know, yes, we do think we need to hire this attorney and this is what it's gonna cost in a retainer and it's worth it and then I think the major milestone was I set up a meeting, a consultation with them and decided that I, I needed to have Sam there. Now I, I, I gave her this like suggestion, like, Hey, I'm meeting at my office. I think you should be there. And that's exactly how he said it. And, and I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. And then like, as the date was approaching, I was like, there's so much, I do so much. Uh, uh, it sounds crazy because I'm not full time in the business anymore, but there's still, so, there's still plenty consuming my day right now with little humans and a husband and other things that I do for the business part time. So I was like, are you sure you need me? Are you, do you really need me there? Like, yeah, just, I think something came up and you were kind of like, yeah, I don't, I may, it was so, I, something like, do maybe you really I don't need, need there? to like, be there. And yeah. I'm like, no, I really re think you should be there. And I was like, okay, I'll come. And, um, because I knew even in that moment, if she was distracted or had something better to do, well, this was going to be the point where we lay out some facts and I get some information and it's never as good when I'm trying to retranslate something to no, Sam. No, it's not. I, so it's it was, better for her to hear it yes, in the moment. Yes, and I appreciate that you did that because I easily would have just been like, okay, I'm not gonna go then. And then like, so this is one of the things that we learned after that meeting, because Brandon's right. He was keeping me in the loop the whole, the whole way. It was pretty light at first because there wasn't really that much to communicate about until it was like time to start making decisions and talk to the attorney. But that one meeting um, and him being persistent was important. And here's why. When we sat down to talk to her, it was like, a, what, a two, three hour meeting um, where she really wanted to hear everything that we had factual and what we had that we thought we had a case on um, against this person um, and or to protect us to see was there a countersuit? Was, was there a reason to um, settle because let me tell you, this is an interesting part of the story that really helped our decision in the long haul as a husband and wife was when we sat down. So he's, he was suing Brandon and the company for close to $100,000, right? We didn't even sit with the attorney yet and they hadn't heard from us. Like we were very quiet until we sat down with her and we sat down to have this meeting with her and he had already cut, he was already trying to settle and said, here, instead of giving me Six or six hundred thousand, one hundred thousand, you know, ninety thousand, six thousand. Give me um, twenty. And we were like, "Why would somebody that thinks they're so right, like, just cut it to twenty grand like that?" Here, just let me just wave eighty grand off. Oh, like, because he's a nice guy, of course. Yeah, right. So it was already so foolish. So we went into this meeting already like, "Ugh, this is such a freaking joke. What a waste of our time." And at that point, I think it triggered something in Brandon, where he was like. I want this guy to pay for wasting my time. Like he really started going like, and he's not a very revengeful person ever. He's usually like the, let's just move on, babe. I'm a little bit more of like the fiery one usually. Like, no, like I want to make sure that blah, 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 whatever it is. And Brandon's usually like, no, like we're, we're good people. We sleep at night. Let's just go to bed and, I'll, and, and leave it to rest and move on. And I'm, I'm usually like, okay, fine. You know what I mean? But this time around, it was the opposite. And this is why this was so important. He had me at that meeting. If I wasn't, cause I feel like I was a little bit more of the less fiery one. Did things annoy me or did things frustrate me? Sure. But, um, I didn't actually want, like, I knew we had a strong case to counter Sue and I did not want to spend the next year or two of our lives and like it, it, it was tempting for me though when our attorney said reviewed. you had yeah i mean I, I i keep great records anytime you do any work for somebody especially on performance space you 
You key, have to keep good records. performance records, right? Every text message, every meeting minutes, and of course all the like financials, like I increased leads 5X, so I brought in these deals with these estimated profits. Um, and when she looked at everything, was like, this is, this is a joke. Like you're, you're clearly, you'll be dismissed from this lawsuit if it ever goes in front of a judge, but you actually have a strong case to, to counter sue. So that was me be getting my validation. Like, yes, he clearly just wasted my time and is trying to waste potentially another year of my time. So I want to see this through all the way to the end to show the facts. Cause I know I've got a guaranteed win and I can be right. And I can hopefully keep him from doing this to other people. So, so let's break down this that's difference. Why I, I wanted to, until we started talking through, you know, looking at it as strictly a business decision, not a, I don't know, make, writing all the wrongs in the world. And then at the same time, she also said, you know, taking this route, like it's nowhere in the contract that if it goes to a lawsuit at any point in time, would either parties have to pay for the attorney's fees? Like the winner, the loser wouldn't have to pay for yeah, attorney's fees. I leave that out. Because you're, you, it's because this is not something that you did not think it was going to get to this level. You know what I mean? Like you don't, you don't think like that. Like, and he was probably really silly not to include it because he does think like that. Um, he's got, you know, multiple lawsuits on his record that I found out after our lawsuit started. And I'm like digging. In addition in. to prison time, he's been federal prison. Yeah. Federal prison and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, um, back to the subject. It was crazy because here we are with two different people that obviously if he makes a decision on his own or I want to go my way or whatever, that it can really cause some rifts in a marriage. We were not, we were divided at that meeting and not in a bad way. Not like we weren't angry at each other. We weren't fighting or anything, but it was like, he was like, I want to counter. We have a good case to counter. And I was going, man, she just told us. So here's a piece. She told us that. Um, we could counter the settlement and settle for less and and it the problem would just go away and and if you settle in Florida law it might even be national law when you settle on a lawsuit he can no longer come after us again for that that lawsuit again so it's done it's wiped away it's erased forever so we could fight for a year or two, take it to the end and win close to six figures and never get back those attorney fees. So it would have just been a net zero. We would have been at, you know, wash our hands and wipe them clean or which was the way Brandon wanted to go or originally, or we could maybe counter the settlement and see like, in my mind I went, cause I don't know, like, I just started thinking, man, he's just trying to sneak one in. So if he wants to get paid so bad, let's just pay to make the problem go away. Like what if we counter with, like we were throwing around scenarios with her. I'm like, what if we just counter a lesser amount? Like an amount that if he took it, like to me, it's clear. It's worth the time. Yeah, to me, it's clear that all he wanted to do was waste our time. And then at the same time, he goes away. Like it's done. And I just had a feeling that he was going to do it. Stop. Like you, you get those gut feelings. I tell Brandon all the time. So, and I was telling him, I just have a gut feeling. This is the way we need to go. And he was like, we'll talk about it later. Right. So we finished up the meeting and we left and over a few days we, we did, we went back and forth and discussed it a few times. Like what, which way I, should we go? I was like, like five grand is like, there's no negotiation. It's worth my time for five grand, but I'm not, I'm not spending any more money than that to make this go away and a hefty you know retainer for a high powered attorney right so and i yeah. and i agreed when he said what do you think we should do and i said let's just dangle a small carrot let's just do five grand i bet you he's gonna take it i bet you i just have a gut feeling he's gonna take it and he took it within like an hour of the <laughs> of the counter going over he took it and ran so and we are just like thankful because he, we're not going to waste all this time now so that was like really, really big when that we got to make that decision together. And Brandon just like, it takes a so lot. How, how did we do that? How did we keep, how did we keep the emotion out of it for the most part? We, we got passionate, of course, but how, how did we keep it from turning into a finger pointing session 
So I want to make sure that the next time our listeners find themselves yeah. under attack. I got you. That they, you know, link arms and get stronger <laughs> instead of, ah, oh, you always do this. I knew you'd get us into this mess. I, I warned you, blah, 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 blah. Because at the end of the day, even with the expense, the lesson that was learned, the opportunity was sought out all the way to the end. Like the worst thing that you can do is have opportunities come in life and just be too afraid to of what might happen. And I've never been that way. I'm always like, well, could do this. We, we had, used to waste a lot of time being like, well, what if this and then that and then this and then that. And we try to like hand. plan hand? our whole life and plan a whole scenario out when you don't know what's going to happen. The fastest way to figure out whether a decision is good or bad is you make the decision and then you make the decision right. And the action, like, thank goodness we figured it out in nine months as opposed to, you know, maybe walk, you know, not even taking the action and and missing out on maybe a huge opportunity or, um, yeah, like, you just don't know unless you So can I jump in? So your question was, what was it that made us, like, not fight or stay collective as a team and my side of it is really simple um brandon shuts down if i get too demandy so for sure and and i we i had a real good peace of mind at the very beginning because brandon and i um were very divided about working with this individual in the first place um and there were red flags from the beginning with the guy and i told brandon this from the start i was really honest with him that i didn't even want him to do this business relationship at all i said there's just something about him i don't like there's something about him i don't trust maybe it's that he was at a mastermind and told us all very willingly that he was in a crazy lawsuit at the time and had spent time in prison for fraud maybe it was that but there was just something very He's almost like, you know, when you meet somebody and you're like, man, they're so personable that they're almost charisma, too, almost too charismatic. And for me, that's a red flag because I've met people in the seminar industry that are so overly charismatic. And then I've known them behind the scenes and they're not very good people. Not everybody it's is a like good that, tool, but, but it can be used for good or bad. And then correct. Right. And then there's other people where they're very charismatic and they're, they're really, really ethical behind closed doors as well. But that one individual, for example, was not. And um, I ju there was just something that was driving me And he proved that by away. attacking right. our family. Yeah, sorry, I'm rambling about it. So anyway, um, I had the opportunity, right, when this all comes up. Like, I could have been the, see, I told you that I had all these red flags and um, here we are now and it's happening. And like, those emotions definitely ran through me. I had to um, really be careful. However, um, it just isn't the time. That's not the time to point a finger or get defensive against your spouse. It's the time to unite with them. Like we've always had this motto that we're on the same team. We've always had each other's backs. There may be times where we feel like maybe like, oh, I'm not getting the support I need or vice versa, just because we got a lot of stuff going on in our life. And sometimes we have to veer one way or the other and the other person just clearly doesn't want to do it. Like. We've been together for 19 years and we don't always agree on stuff. Excuse me one minute. Maxim, go. Mm -mm. Sorry, I'm taking Max to Legoland today and he's waiting very patiently. Um, but when it comes down to now we're in the heat of the moment, this is not the time to start firing off at Brandon that I knew this whole time that this is how this was going to end up with this guy. Um, and then the red flags that we'd see along the way, like we were in communication through him working with the guy, but when he started working with the guy, I said, I don't, I don't want to help with this project. I don't want to work with you guys. I don't, I don't want to be involved with this at all. I just don't like him. Mm -hmm. Um, and Brandon was like, okay. And, um, and before you question, like, why would Brandon work with someone who went <laughs> yeah. to prison and <laughs> his wife gave him all these warnings that he had these red flags? <laughs> People make bad decisions. We all have made some bad decisions, some significantly worse than others. I just know that it doesn't serve me to be a cynic and 
I believe that some people can change, right? Some people can have a serve jail time and come out and actually be, you know, uh, a testimony for the correctional uh, system. And many are not. But again, I don't know that. If you are telling me that you are a good person and you're changed and this, that, and the other, like, you know, I do he my best to have my that. BS meter up, yeah. but I want to believe that most people have good intentions or if they've had a bad rap sheet, they are making a change, especially when working with me because people that know me and spend any time around me know that like, that's what I stand for. I stand for a certain code of ethics and I stand for, you know, the truth and just doing the right thing. And, and, and I think people want like deep down, people want that. They want to be a part of that. So like, they're like, man, all right, if anyone can help me, you know, Brandon's going to be the one. And, and then it just here's the serves other thing. me better to... Sorry, you're dragging on about something that doesn't have to do with the couple thing. So I'm just kind of like interrupting you. See that? <laughs> I'm interrupting him. We got to stay on topic. You are a good guy. And I think that's one of the things along the way that really kept proving itself because even though I didn't want to work with him and said, you go do your own thing with this one, don't really involve me unless you really need to. And I was involved a few times along the way. Um, like when we weren't getting paid and kept having to chase money, Brandon would be like, okay, you got to come into this meeting. And I would come in um, and I would listen to the BS going I'm on. I'm easily sold. <laughs> but, I, the, but the weird thing is like that person didn't realize, I don't think, I, I don't think they realized how like strong or smart of a wife you had. Like, I don't know. I feel like he thought I was just a dumb housewife. I, it's totally my opinion. Mm -hmm. I, it could be validated or not validated. I don't know. But I feel like every time there was like an important meeting that had to happen, he'd be like, oh, tell Sam to come in. And I would come and sit and just kind of listen to you guys. I wouldn't interject much because, um, you know, I wanted Brandon and him to figure out their own stuff, but I would listen to the things going on, like red flag, red flag, and just be like, okay, like Brandon would leave afterwards and be like, if we don't see X, Y, and Z happen by this time, we'll do this to counteract it or to move forward. And he was always making those shifts and changes. So even though he goes back to why did I work with the guy anyway, we had a solid um, united front from the beginning that this was something that Brandon really wanted to do in his career, right? In his career path of real estate, he thought that this could potentially, it's not, um, I mean, like we were kind of Especially joking. around the holidays. Oh yeah. With Christmas coming up and the whole new year and stuff. And I think he was just, I mean, it, I just think, I think it's, I don't know, but I just think he was trying to drain our bank accounts and like poke you so that it would hurt a little bit. But the weird thing is through this whole process, the money wasn't even really bothering us at all, which in the past we've made financial decisions and those act are actually more conflict driven because finances can kind of rile up in relationships. And we really kind of left it out, except for the fact that we didn't want to spend a year or two of our lives, spend all that money on a lawyer just to win it back. Like that was really the only thing financially we were thinking about, but it was more about, okay, what, what do we want for ourselves? So here's some good things to think about when you're in a stressful situation or a potentially stressful situation like this, um, maybe a lawsuit or some other big decision that could really drive in between your marriage or your relationship. You got to think about a couple of key things. What do you want the end result to be? That was huge for us. The end result for us was, I mean, for me was, I just want this guy to go away as quickly as possible. Brandon was, I think a little bit of that and a little bit of, but I don't want it to affect my character. So we had to talk about that a little bit. Well, I wanted to make sure that he didn't do this to other people either. Like the more the truth is put out there, the less people that are going to, you know, do business with that person. I know, but we can't, it's like, it's like that thing. Like you, there's so many people in the world. It's, it's inevitable. He's going to work with somebody and do it again. You know what I mean? So we can, we can only do so much. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but then too, just like, so now you know what you want your end result to be and what are the, the actions and moves you need to take to get there. And so at the end of the day, I just kept Living emotion out of it. Yeah, is... so, right. So we would sit down and Brandon would be like, we have such a strong case to countersue. Why don't you want to do it? And I would just say, I don't, 
this is like, for me, I just kept thinking, man, a whole year of our life while he's trying to focus on growing our business and what we do in our career now and um, the real estate moves that we're making currently. And we're always going to have this like nuisance there that we have to deal with this lawsuit. And then for, um, uh, where was I going with that? For, um, oh, our kids, like, so what, there, everyone's, this is going to come up or something's going to come up in court or something that's going to annoy him or annoy me. And it's going to like maybe get a rise out and then it's going to affect us when we go home. Like that's how we're going to go home and treat each other or, you know, relay it to our kids. And there's so many other things in our life that we're actually grateful for. Want to focus on the positive stuff, right? So like, we're we going to have this like negative thing that kept like poking at us for a freaking year and that we may drag that home into our house and affect us and the kids and our mood. Like those things were just in my mind. So like, I was like, okay, we could go this route. I know we can, but I actually feel like it's going to affect us more long-term, you know, with the longitude of how long this could drag out just to say we won and then we're just still going to break even anyway. So why don't we just say we are winning by taking this route because we're getting a year back of our time right now that this guy's trying to waste. We're, um, settling, which means he can't sue again. So whether he thinks he's right or thinks he's not right, which he thinks he's right, but whether he thinks he's right or he thinks he's right, like we don't care. Like we're winning. Our marriage is stronger. We're stronger as a couple. We're stronger as a unit. We actually get to focus for the next year on what's coming in, not like fighting this lawsuit, right? That was like another big one. Like how do we focus on our 2020 goals if we're fighting our 2019 problems? Like you just got to let that shit go and move on. And those are like a few of the things when we would sit down and he would ask like, why do you want to do this? Why do you want to do this? And those were the things that were coming for me as an end result. So that was just my personal take. Like, and I, I couldn't come to Brandon just to like wrap this up. I couldn't come to Brandon super aggressively or whatever and be like, I told you so because it just doesn't, I am aggressive for what I passionately believe we should do. Like I was pretty aggressive on the, we're, we're going to set. There was a point where I went, we're going to settle. You just need to trust me. Like we're going to, and he's like, well, what's the number? I don't want to spend more than, you know, five grand. And I go, I think five grand is a great number. Like that's exactly where my head was at. I think he's going to take it. Let's dangle the carrot and see what happens. And we are actually kind of laughing. I want to say like laughing all the way to the bank because I'm like, whatever. I think he should have paid us to make the problem go away. But I Merry don't. Merry Christmas. Yep. I, I don't really care. Like this was cheap compared to what the next year would have looked like. So. Just don't get to donate to, you know, good causes as much this year. Oh gosh, Brandon. It's, okay. it's seriously the true kids though. kids in Ethiopia can uh, it is true. Worry. It is true. We had to do a lot less of our um, Christmas giving this year. So thanks. Ouch. You just put that right to the jugular. But it is true. It's true. I know. There were a couple times you came to me. I got a call from one of, our, one of the uh, companies, not companies, but 5013s that yeah. we support. And I was like, oh, I'm going to have to do quite a bit less because kind of took a chunk of that like extra money to deal with this problem yeah but it's all good lessons learned hopefully this has given you something that whether you're going through it now or inevitably life will throw you uh these attacks you've got some perspective take what you want what you don't want don't take yeah i'd say just to wrap this up a couple of things that has stuck with me you know once you have success for a while you get to a point where you do start getting attacked um you can, you can get comfortable. And I read something in a book once that said something to the effect of, you know, protect your empire with the same like savage grind as when you were building it. You know, when it's new and you're in the early years of building something, you know, you have this extra energy, you have this extra like whatever momentum. Um, but once you've been there for a while, you can, t t you can get kind of comfortable and you can make other decisions. And this, once, once you put us in attack mode, we were like, oh no, no one is going to come against me and my family, like period. And then, um, finally in down times, especially teaming up for a, a common enemy is super important. So that's hard to do when you're going through it, 
but keep that in the back of your mind because when you go through something tough, that's when you get like the most amount of growth. So this was super positive. This whole experience was positive and only added another layer of, of armor to the, the strength that we already have. So go through it, face it head on, try to keep the emotion out of it. And, and know that you are, you're a fucking ride or die, right? Like I'm just going to totally get vulgar on it. There should be nothing else that is coming between the decisions you're making together. Nothing can break that bond if you guys stick together. And that is super important. Like, even, like we're so opposite minded sometimes on things, but at the end of the day, we're either going to compromise or we're going to go one direction and we're going to go direction full force on that decision together as a team um, so that we never have resentment and we, we always come out on top. So it's super, it's super important. And remember like we have the super ride or die important. couples podcast for a reason. Like you are it's ride or die. Like you get, there's no option to not have that person's back. And if you've got, if you are going through this, you need some extra perspective or support, DM me, DM Sam. We have plenty of private conversations outside of the, the, the public comments. Um, anything we can do to help you support you, give you extra, um, extra support during a, a season, we are, we are here. All right. We'll see you next week for another episode of the Ride or Die Couples podcast. Later.